Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University, and today we're talking about CryptoKitties. We're going to be talking about the CryptoKitties game on the Ethereum blockchain, and we're going to be talking about uh, some of the code behind CryptoKitties and how it works, and how it's similar to some of the other code that you might have seen uh, me talk about on this channel, specifically uh, how Ethereum tokens work with the uh, ERC-20 standard. Um, I've actually got a video about that, um, about how I, you know, created a um, token sale contract and a and an Ethereum token. So if you haven't seen that already, be sure to check that out because we'll be talking about some of the code in this video. And be sure to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos on how you can build decentralized applications on the Ethereum blockchain. So if you're not familiar with CryptoKitties, basically it is a a game on the Ethereum blockchain that uh, came out towards the end of uh, 2017, and it got famous for several reasons, uh, one of which was it, it slowed the Ethereum blockchain down for a little while um, because of the high transaction volume. Um, but, it, so CryptoKitties basically is a, it's a, it's a collectible game. So you can... Um, Auction, you know, you auction off and uh, purchase these these kitties. So these kitties are essentially crypto assets that you can buy. Um, they're little digital cats, and the kitties can breed, so they have parents. Um, and essentially, you just go to this website and you have a, uh, you know, a a wallet like MetaMask, and you uh, just purchase a kitty. So here's the marketplace. And you all can visit this website um, and kind of look around and, and see how this works um, yourself. You can buy a crypto kitty if you'd like. So let's talk about you know how these work. So a crypto kitty here is a cryptographic asset, right? So it's essentially an asset that is unique and cannot be you know replaced essentially. Um, and this is what's called non-fungible, which is kind of a funny, funny sounding word, but, you know, a fungible asset is, um, or a fungible good is something that can be exchanged for, you know, another good of, you know, similar quality or value, right? So if I have a, a $1 bill, one US dollar, I can trade it for another US dollar and that's okay. It doesn't matter which dollar I have as long as I have you know, representation of, of $1, right? I can buy a soda that's worth $1. Um, it doesn't matter, right? So that's a fungible good or asset. Now, a non-fungible um, good or asset is something that can't necessarily be replaced, right? So this kitty that I'm looking at on the screen, it has a you know, unique pattern, a unique design, um, it's not going to be the same as any other kitty, and therefore we cannot guarantee that it has the same value as another kitty. Um, and it's you know it has a unique ID essentially, a unique thumbprint uh, that that's not going to be the same. That's and that's different from how um, other assets on the Ethereum blockchain work. So essentially, underneath. Um, you know, the CryptoKitties implementation is really just a token standard. Um, and you can think about these kitties as a token on the Ethereum blockchain. It's just that they have a uh, graphical, you know, representation because they're unique, right? So if I was going to create a cryptocurrency, it wouldn't make any sense for me to have, um, you know, some sort of graphic associated with that coin because it doesn't matter which coin I have as long as... Um, you know, I trade it for another coin of equal value, right? I mean, a, a coin of the, of the same cryptocurrency, right? Like, so if I have one Ether and I trade it for, you know, one Ether for whatever reason, um, it doesn't matter, you know, which Ether I have, right? So the difference in, in, in those two things are two different token standards. Now, the first token standard is the ERC-20 token standard, and this is a standard that's used a lot in ICOs. Um, I actually talk about this token standard in another video that I have where I, I kind of show you a token sale website and an Ethereum token contract that I built. 
So that follows the ERC-20 standard, and this is for um, essentially fungible tokens. And then we have another standard, which is um, ERC-721, which specifies a standard for non-fungible tokens, basically tokens that is going to have uh, kind of like a unique, um, it's going to be unique in some way, in, in, in some way, and it's going to be assigned to an owner. So a quick rundown of the other ERC-20 standard, if you haven't seen this before, you can you know visit this on the GitHub. Um, you basically, you just go to the GitHub uh, Ethereum repository and look up the Ethereum uh, improvement proposals, and you can find number 20, that's ERC-20. Uh, so basically, ERC-20 specifies like a standard uh, for these smart contracts that um, kind of show how the token should respond. So it specifies the interface of the token so that it can be used on like exchanges and, and that like, you know, wallets will know um, how to interface with this token. It basically just, you know, gives us a standard so that we don't have to always wonder what that is, right? Basically, it needs to have a name. Um, you know, it has some optional functions like symbol and, and decimals. This is, uh, basically determines how, how small the token can be subdivided. Uh, the total supplies required, things like that. Balance of, uh, basically, you know, uh, shows you how many tokens a certain address has. So if I buy a thousand of these tokens, um, it will know that my address has a thousand of them. So... Uh, ERC721 is similar. It has uh, some similar functions. You know, as you can see that it has uh, a name, uh, a symbol, total supply, uh, balance of. Now, here's some other differences. Um, here's the concept of ownership, which makes this unique from ERC20. You can see owner of. This is the token ID, right? So these tokens have IDs, they're unique, they're, fun they're non-fungible, and uh, we can see you know, who owns a specific token with an ID, not just how many tokens you know, does one person have, not just do I have a thousand tokens, but do I have this specific token? And take ownership. Basically, I pass in the token ID, the individual unique token. We can transfer the ownership, things like that. So, anyways, that's that. Those are the two standards: um, ERC twenty, which is one of the you know early token standards on Ethereum for uh, fungible tokens, and ERC seven twenty one, which is the standard for non fungible tokens. And this is the standard that. CryptoKitties uses, right? It's uh, these CryptoKitties essentially are tokens. They just have, uh, you know, a unique, uh, fancy, cute little face. <laughs> so let's take a look at some of the code um, behind CryptoKitties. So you can find this code on Etherscan. Um, a lot of time, oh, really, any smart contract published to the Ethereum blockchain, you can find on Etherscan. And a lot of people will upload the contract source code so that you can actually see that as well. So I have taken the contract source, copied it, and I'm going to open that in my text editor. So I got that here. Um, this is the other project that I had worked on um, for a token contract. So you can see this is the DAP token that I built. Um, you can kind of see the uh, implementation of some of these ERC-20 standards. Um, here's the name, here's the symbol. Um, you know, Here's the amount that it can be divided by. This is the total supply, um, things like that, right? Transfer, approve, all these are ERC-20 functions. So we'll find similar functions here inside of the uh, yeah, CryptoKitties smart contract. If I look for um, approve, right? If I go down here, we can see the ERC-20 contract. So this essentially has uh, pasted the ERC-20 interface here that will get used elsewhere. I can search for that. Right, so kitty ownership um, is basically taking from this ERC-721. Sorry, I said ERC-20 a second ago, I meant ERC-721. All right, so these are the methods that I was talking about. Total supply, balance of, 
owner of prove transfer transfer from this is the events it emits a transfer event an approval event so let's take a look at uh, how the kitties themselves actually work we're going to go to this kitty base contract so inside of here we can see that there is a uh, kitty struct now if you're unfamiliar with structs and solidity these are uh, basically a way that Solidity allows us to define our own data structures. And that's essentially what this kitty here is just a user defined data structure. Um, and we can tell it, you know, what uh, types of data it contains, which is um, an unsigned integer of its genes. And you can see the notes here. This kitty genetic code is packed into these 256 bits. The format is super secret. A cat's genes never change. So same same idea. Uh, another unsigned integer of its you know the time it was born, or it's created at timestamp essentially. Um, cooldown in block. Um, matron ID. So that that's the uh, cat's mother, and the sire ID the cat's father. The string with ID. Cooldown index generation. So these are some more things you can kind of read about just by browsing the source code here. So whenever a kitty is created, it's essentially created with this uh, data structure right here. So every kitty is represented just like this in the smart contract in Solidity. And we can see this is how they're stored. So we have uh, a kitties array, which is going to contain all the crypto kitties ever created in existence. And we're essentially going to pass in a struct, a kitty struct into this array. And the index of that um, kitty in that array. So, you know, it's going to be, an, it's going to be an array and we're going to put, you know, um, kitties inside of it. And they're all going to have an index from zero all the way up. And essentially, wherever the kitty is in that array is going to be the ID of the kitty. And we can see that in action down here in the uh, create kitty function. So this function takes a matron ID, a sire ID, the generation, the genes, and the owner. Remember, this is essentially a, a non-fungible token, so it's unique and it's going to have an ID, but we're also allowed to have an owner. And that's the whole idea. It's an asset that can be owned by somebody. And we can see uh, the kitty, once it's being created, right here, pushed into the kitties array. So we're taking the um, taking this newly created kitty, and we're getting an ID by pushing it into the kitties array and taking uh, away one from its value. And here is how we are uh, creating the kitty from the kitty struct. So we can kind of back up and, and look over that function again. Basically, these are just some require statements in Solidity that um, kind of keep, the, ensure that these things are true before you execute the rest of this code. I uh, remember, you know, all these function calls that are creating transactions require gas on the Ethereum blockchain. So you want to make sure that, uh, you know, these things are, are executed first because if they fail, it's going to use up any gas that was required up to this point. Um, and it'll refund the rest, but um, you want to use as little as possible. So basically, we want to require that this matron ID is there, the sire ID is there, the generation is there, all these um, arguments that were listed in the function. And then it's going to uh, set the cooldown index. It's going to create the kitty. It's going to require that the ID is present. And it's going to emit a birth event. So smart contracts and Solidity are capable of emitting events that we can subscribe to on the uh, client side of our DAP, which is nice. 
and that's exactly what will happen here. So our, our client will know that this kitty has been born. And we transfer. And this is... Um, this is... Um, part of the ERC-721 uh, standard that I was talking about a second ago. This is transferring ownership, essentially, of this asset uh, to the owner, which is going to be an address, and it's going to have the ID of the asset or the uh, kitty that was just created. And we'll just return the new kitten ID. So I hope you all enjoyed that little tour of uh, some of the CryptoKitties code and also talking about kind of what they are and how they work and how, you know, how they work as a crypto asset and how they compare to uh, other tokens, right? You know, these are non-fungible tokens that are different from, you know, a fungible token that you might see on a cryptocurrency exchange. These are different. These are their own cryptographic assets. And you know, so it's getting really popular. It's getting big. Um, lots of uh, kind of spinoff games are, are coming out like this. Um, so I hope you all enjoyed that. I hope you all found that interesting. Um, if you'd like for me to go more in depth on some of this code, you know, kind of talking about um, the breeding and the auctioning and the inheritance and all that kind of stuff, please let me know in the comments below. And maybe I'll uh, make a video about that if enough people want me to. And be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thanks for watching DAP University.